The Hyundai Verna is back in business with its mid-cycle facelift. After a fairly successful launch in August 2017, the current generation compact sedan has returned with a bang. And the timing is good. Now in any facelift, you get some minor changes, but I have to say with the Verna, the changes are pretty extensive. It's uh, more than just a typical facelift and uh, you know what, that's not a bad thing because it wasn't necessarily a very, very good looking car. It was attractive in being contemporary, but it wasn't really pretty. And at the back, the changes aren't a whole lot because the housing of the lights remains the same, but it's a new LED tail light. The bumper has been enhanced and this is the uh, sport model, the turbo. And so you've got this glossy black uh, scuff plate, little thin uh, chrome element as well. And then of course the twin, uh, chrome tipped exhaust that's new and then there's this pattern in here that's been embedded into the bumper that's again only on the sport uh, this is the top end so of course you've got the uh, dual tone alloy wheels the profile of the car all of the uh, other things on the side not a whole lot of changes but in the front again huge changes because there's two things here first the car is now more in keeping with the global design language and so we're not waiting for the next generation to see that come in it's nice to see that come in right now so it's a lot like the new global sonata the cascade grille which used to have sort of rounded edges has become much edgier and sharper and then you've got this very angular very edgy design in this uh, glossy black grill now that's again only on the sport model so only the turbo gets this and uh, the uh, regular car if you will has a more honeycomb sort of a pattern and it's chrome so it's a really big in your face chrome grill but you can see it's got bigger it's stretched out and the edges like i said are a lot more angular angular is what you get even in the metal here you can see a lot more uh, straight lines and sharp cuts yes it's different it's attractive it's also a good way to prepare for the new i20, which has a similar sort of a face that's coming. And uh, this is what you will get increasingly from Hyundai going forward. So uh, I have to say, the sport model with that black grille, yeah, that definitely looks better than the chrome version. So the Verna looks new and more modern now. Yes, that grille is disproportionate, but I bet most Indians will love at least the chrome overdose avatar of this baby. The Verna has an additional engine now, and that is the biggest change if you ask me. Typically, facelifts do not include new powertrains, but Hyundai is playing it smart by bringing in its new, modern, small displacement turbo GDI engines to most models. This turbo petrol is shared with the Aura, Grand i10 Neos, but then those cars get a less powerful iteration and only with a manual. It is also shared with the Venue in the same state of tune and with the 7-speed DCT gearbox only. So you get 118 bhp here and 172 Nm of torque. This combo is almost a given on the upcoming next generation i20 too. Now, I've always hated using the taglines that uh, the OEMs throw at us. They're calling this one the Spirited Verna. <laughs> and I have to say, it kind of works because uh, the addition of this engine to this lineup, you know, a lot of people thought one litre, will it be good enough for the Verna? It makes the car come alive. It's uh, even got a nice audible growl to it, which is uh, not disturbing. It actually sounds quite nice. It certainly has a different character than the one that we've seen on the venue. I mean, that's fairly nice and sporty too, but here I think it really seems like there are longer revs. It's giving you a little bit more of that control. And then of course the paddle shift thrown in helps you to uh, take over some of that control from the car as well. So the point I'm trying to make though is that it definitely feels more sporty. The handling on this new generation was always good. The steering was a lot more improved than the old car. So what's the downside? Well, I would have preferred a slightly more hefty, hefted rather, and uh, planted feel to the suspension and a stiffer, slightly stiffer, sportier feel to the steering. That's the only thing that kind of goes against the character of what's otherwise definitely a nice and sporty variant. Yes, the 1.0-litre GDI is a welcome addition to the Verna, 
and I encourage more variants being offered with this engine, including a manual. Claimed mileage on this variant is 19.2 kilometers per liter. The other two engines are what the Verna had since the fifth generation came to us in 2017. The 1.5 petrol MPI makes 113 bhp and 144 Nm. The diesel has a similar displacement and makes the same exact amount of power but gives you 250 Nm of peak torque. Both get a 6-speed manual and automatic option. On the petrol though, it is an IVT. So a feature that's been carried over from its big sister, the Elantra, is the smart trunk. So imagine you've got lots of stuff in your hand and you approach the car, the keys in your pocket, a little beep and the trunk pops open on its own or the boot as I like to call it. Throw in what you have and that's certainly convenient. Of course, it's only on the top end. On to the cabin then, right? So as is our protocol and most uh, car makers as well, this car has been sanitized and only then given it to us uh, for the shoot. We appreciate that and we won't do it otherwise. All right, changes on the inside. Uh, not a whole lot of changes, but enough to uh, get your attention. The basic layout remains the same, but uh, you've got an all black treatment only on the Sport, on the uh, GDI. So nice because you get black seats, you've got red accents on those seats, red stitching, red stitching on the gear uh, lever as well down here and some red stitching on the steering, red elements thrown into the AC vents. That's actually quite nice, I have to say. The environment in here does feel pretty sporty. Would have been nice to have some red elements on this uh, digital cluster as well, but uh, still, update on that. And uh, this central armrest now slides forward or back for your comfort. Uh, you've got wireless phone charging. You've seen that on some other Hyundai models. It's now come into the Verna. And you've also got a USB charging point at the back for the passengers in the rear. The car does well on safety at the top end with six airbags, electronic stability control or ESC, and even tire pressure monitoring, dual airbags, ABS or anti-lock brakes, and isofix child seat anchors are standard. And a new emergency stop signal has been added that flashes the brake lights during hard emergency braking. It is standard. And then finally, the prices. Hyundai put up prices of the new facelifted Verna on its website way back in March. So we've known these for a while. The new petrol GDI has just one fully loaded top-end version priced at 13,99,000 rupees. The 1.5 MPI petrol with manual transmission starts at 9,30,000 and goes all the way to 12,59,000 rupees. On the IVT or CVT automatic variants, the prices range from 11 lakh 95000 to 13 lakh 84000 rupees the diesel manual is priced between 10 lakh 65000 and 13 lakh 94000 rupees while the automatic gearbox options are from 13 lakh 20000 to 15 lakh 9000 rupees ex showroom The Verna is reloaded and back. Is there enough here to impress? Yes. Don't get me wrong, there could have always been more if I really want to be greedy. But for the most part, the car remains one of the most modern, relevant, connected offerings with a huge array of variants to fit many budgets. And a lot of the equipment is standard across variants. The Toyota Yaris has failed to make a dent in this segment, though it has its merits. Niche yet worthy of mention are the Škoda Rapid and the aging VW Vento. Despite updates, the Maruti Sierra is now again looking dated, and that means the real battle will come when the next generation Honda City launches. I can't wait.